Launched in 1991 as a sequel series to the popular New Mutants title, X-Force became synonymous with two things, the artwork of Rob Liefeld and the 90s Speculator Bubble. Now, this isn't really their story, so you need not worry, this is officially a pouch-free zone. In 2008, a new incarnation of X-Force appeared on the scene, and this time they were a black ops organization targeting threats against mutant kind, often killing them. But this isn't really their story either. No, this is actually the second volume of Uncanny X-Force, a new X-Force team that essentially carried on the same results as the previous incarnation, but with different members. And now, I do have to admit, X-Men continuity can be really convoluted at times. So convoluted that if I were to even try to tackle a quarter of it, it would result in this video being about three hours long. So, I'm not going to be coming in and interjecting a lot with the personal backstories of a lot of the characters. Not that there won't be interjections, but just not in the normal routine as my previous episodes. But with that, let's tackle Uncanny X-Force, Let It Bleed. Psylocke is called into the office of Wolverine, headmaster of the Jean Grey School for the Gifted. See? I told you things were convoluted. Wolverine removes Psylocke from her teaching position due to the fact she keeps beating up the students. Logan explains that he still does need Psylocke for a different mission in Los Angeles. Psylocke is joined on her mission by Storm. Storm tries bonding with Psylocke by trying to relate some of her feelings over the dissolution of her marriage to the Black Panther. Again, convoluted. The two arrive in Los Angeles and meet up with their contact, former Alpha Flight member Puck. Puck informs Storm and Psylocke that the culprit involved is an individual whom Psylocke has a history with. The interdimensional mutant teleporter, Spiral. Spiral is a bio-enhanced hitman who was once in the employ of a pan-dimensional television producer known as Mojo. Now, on one occasion, Spiral kidnapped Betsy Braddock, aka Psylocke, and transferred her mind into the body of an Asian assassin. That might be the most normal part of this review. Meanwhile, in Paris, mutant thief and former X-Force member Phantom X is pulling off capers with his clone slash dissociative identity slash girlfriend cluster. One more time, it's convoluted. The two then begin trying to enjoy a romantic evening. However, both are worrying about their former lover, Psylocke. Say it with me now. Convoluted. Back in Los Angeles, Storm, Psylocke, and Puck track down Spiral's location to an underground nightclub. Psylocke begins fighting her rival, while Storm and Puck make their way towards the vault in the basement. Upon opening the vault, the two discover a young, previously unknown mutant girl. In the wake of a Marvel Comics event known as House of M, most of Marvel's mutants were suddenly rendered powerless. And in the wake of the event, few new mutants have been born into this generation thus making mutants once again an endangered species in the Marvel Universe. Psylocke continues her fight with Spiral when several of the club patrons begin attacking her. It turns out they are under the control of Ginny, the mutant girl in the vault. This enables Spiral to teleport Ginny away from the club. The three X-members are able to track down Spiral, but before the fight can begin, they are interrupted by returning Lucas Bishop. Lucas Bishop hails from a possible future timeline in which mutants have been rounded up and placed in concentration camps after an event known as the Six Second War. In an attempt to avert this future, Bishop began trying to kill a mutant named Hope, who was the first mutant born after the House of M event. Spiral and Ginny teleport away again, now with both Bishop and the X-Members in hot pursuit, though both Storm and Psylocke notice that Bishop is acting different than he did before. Eventually, Bishop gets his hands on Ginny, who then disappears in a flash of light, leaving behind an unconscious Bishop. Also, Phantom X and Cluster arrive in Los Angeles, only to be attacked by the third aspect of their personality, Dark Phantom X. Don't ask. Again. Convoluted. Psylocke then enters Bishop's mind in an attempt to find out what caused his sudden personality change. Inside, she finds another being occupying his mind. The Demon Bear. 
The demon bear is an entity who haunts the nightmares of the people it possesses. In its most famous incarnation, it took on the New Mutants, focusing on team member Danny Moonstar. After battling back the demon bear, Storm joins Psylocke on the journey through Bishop's Mine. They find out he was living in a future where he was tasked to kill creatures called Revenants. On one occasion, he took on two Revenants, the demon bear and the leader of the Revenants, the white owl. Both would possess Bishop and use his time travel ability to return to the present where the white owl took control of Ginny. Storm comes to find Psylocke's body is missing as Spiral has escaped. Turns out that Cluster took Psylocke in order to fill her in on Phantom X. Upon being let go, Psylocke tracks down Spiral for one last confrontation. After almost knocking Spiral off the edge of a building, Psylocke decides to let Spiral go after hearing about her and Jenny. Later, Psylocke defends her actions to Wolverine during a psychic chat. Psylocke tells Logan that it's best to leave her and her new team alone. She then introduces Logan to her new friend, the Demon Bear. You know, the first two parts of this story really weren't that bad. Unfortunately, the last four completely devolve into an incomprehensible mess. I mean, I tried to piece together as much as I can for this review. I mean, heck, the last part of the story was told almost entirely in flashback for no real reason at all. I guess they just wanted the artist to start drawing things surreally. If that's even a word. And, unfortunately, because of that, I am going to have to give Uncanny X-Force, Let It Bleed, an F. Well, maybe we can hope for better the next time. Let's start by taking a look. Well, we're going to be taking a journey back into the Silver Age.